chief is dead. The constant, the tireless, the seemingly indestructible man of Ireland, Eamon de Valera, is no more. As evening begins to close over the city of Dublin, Irishmen of four generations might well consider the effect this lone Promethean figure has had on their lives, and indeed, on the lives of Irishmen not yet born. Eamon de Valera began as a dedicated patriot, became a revolutionary and partisan fighter, a leader of the party he created, and finally, president of his country for which during his long 92 years he proved he was modestly prepared to lay down his life. To the lying in state in St. Patrick's Hall comes his immediate family. He is survived by four sons and two daughters. His wife, Sinead, died earlier in the year. The president of the Irish Republic, Mr. Carula O'Dolly and Mrs. O'Dolly. Mr. Jack Lynch, leader of the opposition. Members of the government of Ireland also pay their respects. Humble Irish men and women come too. Himself of modest origin, he was born in New York in 1882, the son of a Spanish music teacher and an Irish immigrant mother. At the age of two, when his father died, he was sent to his mother's relatives in Limerick, where his education began. In later life, his academic achievements were considerable. After the lying in state at St. Patrick's Hall, the cortege proceeds through the streets of Dublin to the cathedral for solemn requiem mass. The O'Connell Monument, erected to the memory of a man beloved in Irish history. The GPO building, built over the backdrop to that drama of 1916, which was to project the young de Valera into the struggle for Ireland's freedom. High dignitaries of the church attend the Requiem Mass at the cathedral, among them Cardinal Conway. Again to pay homage to this austere yet quietly humane man, come the ordinary people of Ireland, those who knew him affectionately as the chief, or simply, Dev. After the service, soldiers of the 25th Battalion carry the coffin to the gun carriage. The procession moves slowly to Glasnevin Cemetery, the streets lined by crowds, thoughtful and silently respectful, to most of whom the name de Valera has always been as instantly familiar as the word Ireland itself. Ireland mourns him, and Ireland will miss him, his steadying influence, his great and natural diplomatic skill, which he exercised at a time when diplomacy was a vital ingredient in the conduct of Irish affairs. When age, if not inclination, forced him to leave politics behind, his image lived on, that almost symbolic image of the rightness of Ireland's cause.
There are probably many in the crowd lining the route who disliked him, who deplored his methods and his political beliefs, and who during his lifetime did not wish him well. But few of them would deny that what Eamon de Valera ever did, he did passionately, unselfishly, steadfastly, and only for the island he loved. Dev is dead, and the world of free men is the loser for that.